Well, it is good to be back in this space again, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Rising Mystics Masterclass. Um, in our uh, earlier um, class, I dealt with watchmen. I dealt with the watchmen, what of the night, and I dealt with the, the role of the watchmen, the watch hours. We dealt with a few of the watch times and things of that sort. And so, but in this one here, what I want to do is deal with the third watch. This is going to be about the third watch. Now, if you are new to this and just hearing this, you're going to have to listen to number one, the watchman, where I go over that because I can't go all over all of that here. But as I told you, there are eight watch periods. There are eight watch periods that you find in the Bible, like in with these ancient people in that region, eight watch periods where they um, had watchmen on the wall. Excuse me one second, and I am going to turn this down so that we will not be uh, interrupted because uh, uh, for whatever. So there are about eight watch periods. I told you that from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the first watch, say first watch. From 9 p.m. to 12 uh, uh, a.m. at midnight, that's the, uh, that's the second watch, the midnight watch. From midnight, uh, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m., that is the third watch. Say third watch. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about today. From 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., that is the fourth watch. Okay, and between the third and fourth watch, it was called the cock's crow. And you're going to find out why that's important. And that was usually around 3 o'clock or just after 3 o'clock, the cock's crow, all right? Now, okay, so we're going to go a little bit further here, and uh, you can, those are the, the night watches. Now, there are the day watches. The day watches are 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., okay? That's the morning watch there. And from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon, that would be the sixth watch. And from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., that would be the seventh watch. And from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., that is the eighth watch. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, shouldn't you have started with 6 a.m. instead of 6 p.m.? That's the Western way of thinking, okay? No, uh, because God's days start in the evening. Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. Evening and morning were the first day. So the biblical calendar and the way things are arranged with cosmology, uh, it is basically a lunar solar calendar uh, versus what we now have in the West, a solar lunar calendar. We start the day with, oh, the sun is up. It's the beginning of the day, okay? Because the sun worshipers and because of the, uh, the, the solar lunar calendar that was developed through the Roman Empire, you know, and Daniel had prophesied all of this, that would take place. And so, uh, but the ancient calendars of many ancient people was a lunar, and still is for many, a lunar solar calendar where the day begins in the evening at the sunset. So therefore, these watches would begin there. So as I said, from 6 a.m. to 9, that is the first watch. But tonight, we're gonna deal with the third watch. And on the previous recording, and session we had, we found out that uh, these watchmen, they were a type of intercessors, watchmen on the wall. They were also a type of prophets. We learned that if you're called to be a prophet, if you have the gift of prophecy, you should be an intercessor. But especially if you're called to the office of a prophet, you should be an intercessor, okay? But not all intercessors are prophets. However, you may function in the prophetic gifting and stuff, but all prophets are intercessors. That's one of the way you're going to know because they are there to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge so that destruction won't come. They are there to see. They are the watchmen that are seeing. These watchmen on the wall, they were at a vantage point where they could see far out, further than the other people that were in the city, okay? And they depended on the watchmen to tell them 
what time it is. That's why the scripture says in Isaiah 21, 11, and 12, watchmen, what of the night? What of the night? He says, the morning cometh, the night is, and one translation says, it's still night. It's still night. It's not morning yet. If you go and you come back and ask me again, I'll tell you the same thing. It's still dark. But yet the question was, how long will it be before this darkness is over? It's coming because the watchman can see it. His position where he's at allows him to see the first rays of sunlight coming across the mountains or coming over the horizon, whereas everyone else only sees darkness. Okay, That's the office. That's the ministry of the prophet. That is uh, one of the abilities that a true intercessor has. You may be seeing things happening in your world, in the media, in your home or whatever, but because you are an intercessor, you have this connection with the most high, the great spirit, okay, God, and you're praying and stuff. You see beyond what appears because you're not just using these eyes, but you're using your third eye, the eye of the spirit to see. Okay, so today we're going to deal with the third watch. Uh, as I've said before, that is my favorite watch, and uh, I don't want to, uh, to make it sound like that is the most important one because all the watches are important. But there are some of us that are called to do certain things, and so uh, you have to be uh, who you are and to stand in that. I remember when I first came out to the Phoenix area, probably over 15 years ago, and uh, I was in my house, we had a big house and uh, surprise, and I'm in the downstairs office and I'm in my meditation and uh, just worshiping and doing something there. And the spirit tells me, uh, cause I'm kind of like also, I've been complaining, God, why did you send me down here? I don't know anyone, didn't know anyone at all. So the spirit tells me to go outside in the backyard. Now the house I lived in, it was a brand new house and so the, the landscape had not been developed in the backyard. So it was what you could call a desert landscape. So it was basically dirt and a little sand and little patches of, of grass. It was waiting to be developed. And so he says, go and stand out there. And so I go and I stand out there in the backyard. And this is the truth. I've shared this story many times. As I stand there, uh, and stuff, I all at once go into a vision and I see people all over the world standing. I'm sure not saying that they were standing at the exact same time, but I saw people standing all over the world. And I saw this grid, this grid that was beneath my feet on the planet. The only way I can describe it as a grid. And I could see all of these different, uh, I guess, lines or meridians of this grid. And I could see PowerPoints all over the world, all over the world. And one of the things that the Spirit said to me, he says, I've called you to stand, basically, and I'm paraphrasing some of the things, to be an intercessor and to connect with others throughout the world in spirit to maintain the balance on the planet. That's what I was told. Now, I didn't fully understand all of that at the time. I understood most of it, but I didn't, I just couldn't, me, I'm, I was sent down here, you know, to connect with this invisible grid, energetic grid, and that my work and what I'm doing spiritually is connecting with other people, different parts of the world that I may never consciously know and that we are doing things in prayer and intercession as watchmen, watch women, to maintain the balance between light and darkness, good and evil. Okay. And as you grow more in the spirit, you will understand that. Because see, you are in a universe, you are in a world of duality. It was created that way, and it has to be that way for a time. Okay, for a time. You find that from Genesis. You find that in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, land and sea, day and night, light and darkness, good and evil. So the dualities, male and female. So everything in the universe is based on that. And uh, one of the ministries of 
uh, many prophets in this hour, some of the prophets, I should say, and intercessors, is to maintain that balance. Because if there are not enough intercessors and not enough people answering that call to stand on that grid and to connect with others throughout the world, evil will outweigh good. Darkness will outweigh the light will overcome the light. And we know that can never happen. The scripture says that Ezekiel twenty-two thirty, 30, I sought for a man to stand in the gap to make up the hedge. That's what I'm talking about. So that the land would not be destroyed. And so that is the power of a watchman of all of us that are watching and intercessors. And as I said, there are some that are called to do uh, other things that are beyond just the basic intercession and to interface with uh, entities and interface with energies and other things that maintain this level of balance until we come to fully into what you could call the age of Aquarius, the seventh day, the millennium, or the singularity, scientific term, okay, for that. All right, so the watchmen, what are they watching for? Spiritually speaking, let's go on the esoteric and the spiritual stuff now. I've dealt with in the previous uh, video uh, on watchmen, on the watchman was a military guard that was on the wall watching to inform in case there was danger. He would sound the shofar. He had a sword. You as a spiritual watchman, you have your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You are in the army of the Lord. Okay, and uh, you are to watch and you are to pray as Yeshua said. So what are we watching for? And we're dealing with the third hour. The third hour here, as I said, is between 12 o'clock a.m. midnight to 3 a.m. Now, this is a very peak time for a lot of spirituality taking place. This is why you see, matter of fact, in a lot of the science fiction movies, horror dramas and things like that, that they're using that time frame. Why? Because everyone, all the ancients knew and still know today that every in each of these time slots of these eight watch times, it was not just about the literal linear time, but it was about things that were happening in the atmosphere, things that are happening in the space influencing the atmosphere. And so what we're watching for in the third watch, just to tell you some of the, I guess, negative things that happens during this time in the third watch is, it is a time where the enemy puts his plans into place. Now you might say, what enemy? Hands of the natural sword and the spirit. The military guards, the watchmen were watching for an enemy, an invading, invading force coming to take over. And so it is doing certain hours certain hours that certain entities have more access and can be more successful at doing what they would like to do. And so between the hours of midnight and three o'clock, that happened to be a peak period where the enemies plan for your life, for your family, your job, your health, and things like that. There are, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, there are conferences that are held regarding many of us. I'm not trying to scare you or anything like that, but there are conferences that are being held, especially if you are functioning highly spiritually and if you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. There are, there are conferences that are held to see what they can do to try to trip you, to keep you from fulfilling your purpose to bring about an imbalance in your home, in your job, your career, or whatever. Okay, so between those hours, this is the time of a lot of demonic strategies that are initiated and implemented. Okay, this is a time where the enemy would seek to maybe hijack your destiny. So a lot of people don't know what they're here for. That's why we have the problem with the mistaken identity, identity crisis. People don't know who they are. They don't know what they are. 
and they change from day to day, year to year, because they don't have an identity in Christ. They don't have an identity in the creator. And once you get rooted in the creator and have an experience with the creator, you're no longer confused about your identity or your gender, okay? And so, but this is a time that people's destiny, what they are brought here for, gets, gets hijacked. I'm gonna explain that a little bit further in a minute because there are things that are going on during those hours that can affect your life, not only the next day, not only that night, but in years to come, okay? And it will take you becoming an intercessor or someone interceding or a prophetic voice speaking into your life to take back what was stolen from you and you didn't even know that it was stolen. Can you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about the third watch. I'm talking about the things that happen during the third watch. Okay, it's the time, uh, if you read the Bible here, it speaks of a people in the Old Testament, you find them in Joshua and in other places that was called the Rephaim, R-E-P-H-A-I-M, the Rephaim. Those were ancient giants, okay, that literally did exist. But I don't really wanna talk about the giant part of them because the Rephaim, if you do any study on it, it deals with the dead ones, okay? It deals with the dead ones. So during the hours of midnight to 3 a.m., the Rephaim are stirred. The Raphaims are stirred. The Raphaims are stirred. This is during the time that those that have crossed over that maybe did not know that they are really dead yet, or those that had a horrible death, maybe even a horrible life, and they haven't gone to the light yet, and they're yet wandering around. And I know for many of you that may be Christians, you're thinking, oh, I don't believe that, you know, you don't have to believe in it. It's real anyway, you know. Ask the ancients, ask your elders, you know, and uh, it is there. Look in the Bible, you see, is that that's what Raphaims mean. It means the dead one. So it is during this time that you will find ghosts. Okay, and dead spirits moving about. It is during this time that you have found that uh, there are these spirits that uh, have been bound, uh, earthbound spirits. Did you know that they're earthbound spirits? They can only manifest in the earth realm. Okay, and these spirits that are confined to the four elements. Can you hear what I'm saying? Okay, there are the earthbound spirits, there are the waterbound spirits, okay, there are the air spirits in the air, princes and the powers of the air, okay, there are the fire spirits. Remember, they had Molech, the god of fire, and all of that, okay, right? Okay, so now it's Okay, so now during these hours here between say midnight and three o'clock and even into the even into the fourth watch, but I'm dealing specifically with the third watch, they are given more permission. Those spirits that have been bound, they have a little bit freedom to roam around and to function and to do things. This is why there's a need for intercessors. This is why some of you you look over at your clock and it's like what midnight It's two o'clock It's three o'clock in the morning and night after night you're waking up looking at your clock and it's somewhere between 12 and three o'clock maybe some of you even close to four o'clock or something like that and what spirit is trying to get you to do is to wake up and to intercede and to pray because something is being planned most likely for your life or your family members some spiritual stuff is happening and you are there to be a watchman to pray and to stop it from happening now you don't even have to know exactly what it is that's going but if you have the holy ghost you can pray in tongues because the bible says that you you don't know how to pray as you ought to pray, but the Holy Ghost will make intercession for you, okay? I can't say that I've gotten up every time, you know, at that time, but I do wake up at that time, and most of the time I'm not even going to sleep until around that time because I have to do my spiritual work, and my time that I do it many times, most of the time, is around that time, but there are times that I don't get up out of the bed, but I lie there in the bed, okay, and I utter prayers declaration decrees or i pray in tongues you know there are other times i'm pacing the floor 
between those hours, walking around my house, everybody's asleep, praying for the neighbors, binding and rebuking things that could be coming from there to my house. I'm praying for my appliances, all kinds of stuff like that, okay? So I'm trying to just show you how to function, how to function, praying for your family members and all of that. And so, as I said, between those hours, the Raphaims are stirred and they are allowed some freedom, okay? These water spirits, people are bound by all kinds of things. Now, you have to really understand deliverance. I did deliverance for many years, you know, and uh, was very good at casting out demons and dealing with them and stuff. And I still do. I've done it, matter of fact, even on our platform, on the Zoom platform here, spoken right into the camera. People in this country and in other countries and demons came out right there, okay? Because when you know who you are and the power that you have, there are no limitations, okay? We're not limited by a screen here. And so the Raphaims are stirred. Now, here's something else. Now, this is, uh, I had the, uh, the privilege, I'll say this, uh, of my upbringing and then later being exposed to people that understand the mystical things on the light side as well as the dark side. I believe it was the Apostle Paul said that we are not unaware of the devices of Satan, okay? What do you mean you're not unaware? That means you have to know some of the tricks. You have to know what's going on. And the problem is with Christianity, modern day Christianity, people are filled with fear. Everything that looks a little bit different from what they were taught in Sunday school, very elementary kindergarten level of consciousness, is the devil is wrong, is everything. No, no, no. And they go on and on and on and they mis misidentify uh, witchcraft, Satanism, and all of that. They don't know what they're talking about, right? And so, but I've had the privilege over the years to meet witches, to deal with witches to, to, to uh, deal with people that were coming out of some of the satanic type of witchcraft where sacrifices and things uh, were offered and things like that. And to see that side, not in fear, but to know it, to see it, to learn it so that I can counter it, okay? Somebody say intercessor. Somebody say you have to know what you're called to do. Now, not everybody's called to do that. Matter of fact, I've gone into Satan's temple, you know, in Los Angeles many years ago. I've, I've been there. I've read the Satanic Bible and stuff. <gasps> Why? Because I want to know. If there is an enemy, you have to know your enemy. I'm not telling everybody else to do that, but I'm telling you what I do because I know what I am called to do, right? Now, the half hour before midnight, is called a time of doing good, okay? When you're dealing with the occulted forces. Now, the occult only means that which is hidden. If you are a believer, if you are a spirit-filled believer, you believe in the occult because the occult means the belief in the supernatural, prophecy, visions, dreams, the meaning of things like that. We believe in all of that and we practice all of that. That's what it means. Now, modern-day Christianity uh, have misidentified it, misdefined it, and relegated it all to something negative, you know, and that is one of the big errors that is there, and so a lot of people don't know their left from their right, and the people on the other side, the dark side, make fun of them because they know they don't have no power, and they don't know what they're talking about, okay, and there are books and books written out there about it and you have a many fake people that come out and they make a whole lot of money and say well i was in this i did this i was a satanist priest i was a high priest i was a high priestess and stuff and they could go woo, 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 let's get good you know and they buy all the stuff and stuff and you look at it and you find this stuff it's filled with trash you know not all of them but i'm just trying to tell you just trying to open your eyes and stuff and see, but if you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. But since I know, I know, right? <laughs> and, and most of the people of God are afraid to learn, are afraid to know, They're bound with fear. Therefore, they have no power. So the half hour before midnight is called a time of doing good. The half hour after midnight is called the time of doing evil, okay? And so between the hours of, 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 uh, of 12 o'clock and three o'clock, you know, uh, it is called, matter of fact, the, the midnight hour, it is called the witching hour. 
but that witching hour goes all the way to even to, to 3 a.m. That is the third watch. I'm telling you that people that function in the dark arts, they are very busy. Witches are literally flying. Sorcerers are conjuring up things during that time because during that time, there are certain portals that are open based on the movements of the heavens. For example, if you're here in America, you're on the West Coast and you're at the third hour, the third watch, uh, between 12 and 3 o'clock, there are certain influences that are there. People in Africa, at the same time, they don't have access to that. They have to wait until the third watch for them, until their time zone is midnight till 3 a.m. And then there's these energies and forces that can be used for good or evil that are operating. And so the witches are flying, the sorcerers are doing, the wizards are doing stuff. And while most of the believers are snoring, <laughs> powerless, with very little knowledge of the spiritual world. And anything that looks spiritual, they relegate it to, oh, that's a demon, that's a devil. And they don't even know what a devil or a demon is. You know, okay. I'm sorry for getting a little bit excited, but, you know, I have a passion about that because we need to know, we need to be educated to understand what we're dealing with because you're living in a time where there's about to be a horde, a flood of things coming into this three-dimensional world. And I don't want to get into that right now here, but I'll talk about that another time. And so now we find out that, that between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock, it is called uh, dead time. Dead time. Now, uh, if you which you probably don't, but people that, that deal with the dead or deal with dead things and stuff like that, they go to the cemetery around that time because that is dead time, okay? They understand that because as I said, the Raphaims, the Raphaims are stirred during that time and spirits, entities, earthbound spirit, water spirit, wind spirits, fire spirits are free to roam about and they have this space time that's given to them and then they have to go back <laughs> i'm talking to you about the spirit world okay all right let's go a little bit further here this is a time that harassing spirits are released harassing spirits okay that will come while you're sleeping okay and if they don't manifest while you're sleeping they're ma they're manifesting and will work their way into events into the next day or the next week or things like that, that can manifest in your physical body, that can manifest in your children, that can manifest in your job, your school, anything, okay, like that, uh, harassing spirits, okay? That's when people release spirits. Not very long ago, someone said to me, uh, you know, gave me an overt type of uh, threat regarding like, you know, witchcraft, you know, and things like that, you know, I mean, I'm talking about real stuff, right? Not the stuff that most people are talking about. And uh, which it did not phase me, I wasn't afraid because I know who I am. I've dealt with all kinds of things before by the grace of God and been very successful and stuff. And so my boys and I, we were up in the uh, room just before midnight about to do some late night devotional time. Okay, sometime it is late in case if they decide to watch something on TV, we get together late, right? And so while we were there talking in the dark room, okay, the room is dark, and we're talking about scripture, an entity comes in and he makes a noise around the metal uh, waste uh, paper basket, waste can that's in the room. First, I thought I was the only one that heard it. Let's just, did you guys hear that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Because sometimes when spirits are sent, you might be the only one here. No one else might not hear, it, but you know, you hear. It. But we all heard it, and I felt the presence of it, and I told them there's nothing to be afraid of. I know what it is. And I began to teach them and uh, told them what to do, and we just sent it back where it came from. Okay, that's just showing you that during that time, period, uh, where spirits are sent, spirits are sent. Can I tell you something else? That the way the spirit world works, because between 12 o'clock midnight and 3 o'clock a.m., there's 
hyper spiritual activity, a lot of demonic power and angelic power, spirits that may have been sent early in the day may not be able to manifest until between that time of 12 and 3 a.m. Did you hear what I said? Okay, I'm talking about for people that understand the mystical arts, dark side or light side, okay? That spirits that may have been sent may not be able to manifest until between 12 and 3 a.m. The same thing with angels. The same thing with some angels, I should say, and I'm gonna explain that in just a few minutes here. We're talking about the third watch and some of the things that happen and the importance of being an intercessor uh, in the third watch. Let me just show you something here uh, that um, I just showed you that it's a time of a lot of demonic activity, negative activity, and uh, we're going to get to the positive side, but I, I just want you to see this and that is in your Bible. Okay, you find in the book of Exodus chapter 11. Just when Moses and the Hebrew Israelites were about to come out of Egypt, you find this. It says, uh, verse 4, and Moshe said, thus says Yahweh, thus says Yahweh, okay, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. What time? Midnight. That is a third watch. What's going to happen? And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt will die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sitteth upon the throne, even to the firstborn of the maid servant behind the meal, and the firstborn of all the beasts. And there should be a great cry in the city throughout the land of Egypt. When was it going to happen? It was going to happen during the third watch. So what I'm telling you, that the spirit of death becomes more uh, prominent during the third watch. Because a lot of negative energy is being generated during that time, okay? Let me go a little bit further. You don't believe me, right? Okay, let me go a little bit further here. You ever heard of sleep paralysis? I'm going to be doing a teaching on that. I'll put it on YouTube here. By the way, click like if you're enjoying this and subscribe. This is on YouTube, right? Okay, sleep paralysis. According to medical experts, most sleep paralysis happens between midnight and 3 a.m. Do you think that's coincidence? No, it is not coincidence because there's a lot of demonic activity. There's a lot of spiritual activity taking place around that time, okay? So sleep paralysis take place around that time. Now, another thing, uh, according to experts, stats show most suicides take place between midnight and 3 a.m. Is that coincidence? No, it's because of what I told you. The movements of the heavens, no matter where you are on the planet, when you get into that third watch slot between midnight and 3 a.m., everything in the spirit realm is hyper, is hyper. They have more access into the 3D, 3D world. And so people that may be, uh, may be on the verge or people that are out of balance, <clears throat> mentally, emotionally, and, and already feeling uh, just uh, bad about themselves might be prone to commit suicide. And that spirit will enter them and they will end up doing it. Most of them take place around that time. According to experts, most night terrors start or happen between 12 midnight and 3 a.m. Most night terrors. Why? Let me show you a scripture here. All of this is in the Bible. You just have to know how to read it, right? Okay, the book of Matthew, it says this here. Let me find Matthew 13 and uh, show you this. I, I did this. I taught on this stuff in 2015. Matter of fact, on my website, atam.org, I have a, an article where I dealt specifically with the third watch. I didn't deal with the other watches on the website, but I, I did a series and I started teaching on the watches then. OK, and so uh, in Matthew chapter 13, it says this in uh, verse 24 and 25. It says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. Okay, this is your field, right? 
that, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. When? When people were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed tares, negative things, demonic seed, in with all the good. In other words, this man had done a lot of good things, but while he was sleeping, the enemy came in and sowed a lot of negative stuff stuff to ruin his life stuff to ruin his finances is talking about here to ruin his business okay that was sown in the night season when do people sleep when do people sleep notice it says while men slept do you realize that your body is on a specific rhythm no matter where you are on the planet this is the way the most high created us that around a certain time it is uh, it is called your circadian rhythm kicks in and the circadian rhythm really kicks in around midnight, between midnight to 3 a.m., where the body is moving into this space of sleep, unless you are one that have broken that circadian rhythm by working at night. If you have night jobs, your circadian rhythm is off. If your circadian rhythm is off, you may not dream or you may not remember your dreams. Okay, as easily because you have disrupted the circadian rhythm. And I do realize that many people have to work at nights. We thank God for doctors. We thank God for nurses and other people that, that care give that have to work at night, the police and all of these other people that, that work at night. So nothing wrong with that, but I'm just showing you the scripture while men slept. Matter of fact, the watchman, the night watchman had to be awake and watching at night. And so sometimes we are called to intercede for others that are sleeping people that are sleeping, people that are not aware and may be literally sleeping. We're called to intercede. And so you as a watchman, you are seeing, you're watching and you are seeing that enemy come to sow some tears into somebody's life. You're able to call that out, to speak something and stop it and disrupt it. Okay, that's the power of intercession because while men slept, so most suicides happen between 12 o'clock and three o'clock. Sleep paralysis most time happen between 12 and three o'clock. Your circadian rhythm goes into effect where the body is slowing down between 12 midnight and 3 a.m. Your brainwave pattern changes and move from alpha to theta state, preparing you to be able to go to sleep between that time because you can't sleep if you're at alpha or beta state. You know, you'd be like me, I'm just all over the place, right? And so your brainwave pattern literally slows down to the theta and onto the delta state so that you can go to sleep around that time. Why is that important? I'm showing you that not only am I showing you the spiritual aspect of it, the occult, the occultic acts, uh, 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 part about this, but I'm showing you that science is confirming this. Why is this important? So when your brain wave pattern slows down to a slower wave, like, you know, delta, theta wave, what happens? Your mind is more open to receive. This is why you dream. This is why you travel when you dream, because your brain wave has slowed down. And you go into REM, rapid eye movement, and so now you're traveling all over the place. But by the same token, it can give access while men sleep for an enemy to come and sow tears and create sleep paralysis and all other kinds of things that happens. Night terrors happen, nightmares happen mostly between midnight and three o'clock. That's what statistics show, okay? Because that is a very interesting hour. Your pineal gland, your third eye, between midnight and three o'clock, secretes more melatonin. Pineal gland that sits in the back of your brain and represents the third eye here. That's, this is where you see the pineal gland is literally an eye. This is why you see like in ancient Kemet, Egypt, you see the, uh, the all-seeing eye of Horus. You see the pharaohs with the caps and with the uh, serpents coming out of the forehead because the third eye, your pineal gland, according to science, is a backwards eye. It has over 200 retina cells in it, so it actually does see. And so the ancients in, from Africa and India, as a, it is true, and it's not something demonic or evil, 
Everyone has it. Every animal has it, the, the pineal gland that is there. So the pineal gland starts to secrete more melatonin. What does melatonin do? It helps you to fall into deeper spaces of sleep, okay? But it also helps you to access visions, dreams, the supernatural. Helps you to see things that you do not see with your two eyes, but you see, I see with the third eye that happens between 12 midnight and 3 a.m. So I've shown you from the spiritual side, occultically in scripture, during that hour, during that, that watch, that third watch, all the things that happens during that time, I've shown you why uh, and how it can affect a person from the scientific level because of your circadian rhythm that everyone has and because of the pineal gland that you have, that everyone has, and the things that are going on within your physical body, your brain wave pattern that slows down. Okay, so you uh, come to this place of there was a movie that was called Midnight in the garden of good and evil, midnight in the garden of good and evil. I believe that there was a man that was called Yeshua. Some of you call him Jesus. 2000 years ago, he went to a garden <clears throat> to pray. It was after a long dinner with his supper with his disciples. And then after the supper, uh, he washed their feet and he ministered to them and taught them many things. And then he led them into a garden to pray. And it was around midnight. It was in that third watch that he was there. Now, while he was there, he had already released Judas and says, go do what you have to do. You know, that the enemy conspired a plan to arrest him, to take him, to crucify him. Remember, I told you that between the hours of 12 a.m. midnight and 3 a.m., there is conspiracy taking place. The enemy takes counsel you know, in the spirit realm, if you could see with the eye of the spirit and see something, you can see that things are happening, especially if you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Now, if you're not doing nothing, if you're just a nominal religious person or Christian or whatever, you know, go to church on Sunday, you know, nobody's worried about you. Nobody even notice you. But if you are someone that prays, seeks God fast and that you are changing lives and stuff, you have now come on the radar of Satan, if you will, or the kingdom of darkness. And so there are things where people conspire. So after that time, between that time there, they conspire to arrest Jesus. And you'll find there that he was there in the garden praying. And the scripture says this, but let just before I get to that, let me just show you something else. I One scripture I forgot. Well, maybe I'll just... I'll just go on with this here. But so uh, Jesus came to his disciples, Yeshua came and said uh, to them, you know, could you not watch one hour? Could you not watch one hour? So now this was further into that third hour uh, uh, experience, that third watch. I keep calling it third hour, but that third watch experience. Could you not watch one hour? And they couldn't. They fell asleep. OK. And you know the story that they came and arrested Jesus. And it had to be most likely between 12 and 3 a.m. Okay, during that time that he was arrested. But he gave us a clue. He had told Peter, he says that, you know, the cock, you will have denied me three times before the cock crows. Now, if you live in that part of the world, you would understand the cock crows is also a, a part of the watch. It is at the end of the third watch and the beginning of the fourth watch. It is three o'clock and after the cocks crows, okay? And so this is how we know that it was during the third watch that Yeshua was taken and arrested and that this conspiracy against him to bind him and to hold him in bondage and to crucify him was planned during the third watch. And that is a uh, metaphor, if you will, although it really happened, it is a sign showing you know, what goes on in the spirit realm regarding spiritual people, all right? Now, so we find that happened uh, during the third watch and uh, this, and he was arrested. But you find before this that he's in the garden. Here's the positive side of it. He's praying and the scripture says, 
angels came to minister to him. So just as there is an increase of demonic activity and negative activity happening during the third watch, there is an increase of angelic activity where you can call upon your angels. You can give assignments to your angels. You can interact with your angels. And I, I could go on and on telling you many, many experiences I've had during the time with the angelic as well as with the demonic. But it is a very spiritual time. And so you as an intercessor, as a watchman, uh, you're being encouraged today to engage if you are up at that hour, if you wake up at that hour, whether it is for five minutes or whether it's for an hour or so, you know, do something spiritually that can change uh, your world and the lives of other people. So it's a time of high spiritual activity. High spiritual activity is a time where the Holy Ghost will give strategies of how to overcome for your business, for your family, for your job, for your life, for your physical well-being, for your spirituality. Just as on the negative side, the demonic realm, there are conspiracies and there are strategies being given against you. On the positive side, there are, there are the angels and there are positive strategies because we have to keep the balance. A false balance is an abomination but a just weight is his delight, okay? Now, so we find that. I'm gonna read you this one scripture in Lamentations and I'm almost finished here. And I thank you for your time and I believe that you're getting something out of this. Okay, Lamentations uh, 2 verse 19, I believe it is, yeah. It says, arise, cry out in the night, in the night watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of Yahweh. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of your children. Look at that. Lamentations. Most people don't even know that's a book in the Bible. It's right out of Jeremiah, okay, the weeping prophet. He says, get up, get up in the night watches. See, I was telling people the other day, you know, I said it even earlier here, like I walked in my house. You know, I pray over my kids, anoint them with all. I mean, you think about you that have kids that are out there in the school system or grandkids out there. That is a scary place. That is an unsafe place to be because you don't know if there's some crazy person going to come in with a gun or maybe not just some crazy person, but some person just filled with hate and want to make a name for themselves is going to come with guns or grenades and blow up everything. And there are those innocent lives lost. So he says, get up and cry out for your children. Cry out for your children, your grandchildren. If you don't have any, cry out for mine. Cry out for your friends, your nieces, your nephews and stuff. Get up and pray for people during the night watches. Lift up your hands toward heavens and cry out for the young children. Okay, and for the things that are happening with them today. So the Holy Ghost is giving strategies during this time. In my last, very last scripture, I believe I'm going to uh, share with you uh, tonight is this. And this is in Ezekiel chapter 20, uh, chapter 12. And this is a prophetic word for you. I'm going to prophesy to you, everyone that is under the sound of my voice. I got a word for you tonight. And just before we get to this, uh, I want to just let you know that during this hour is the time that you can ascend into the divine court. Ascend into the divine court, your intercession, ascend into the divine court. Yes, the courtroom and get a restraining order against the enemy. Get a, a restraining order, get a no contact order. Some of you have kids, you have grandkids and they're involved with lifestyles that they should not be involved with. Some of you have talked to them and they're not listening. You need to go to court, into the heavenly courts and get a restraining order and tell that devil to back off. Get their hands off of them. Some of them are in lifestyles that you know that's wrong. They know that they were not raised that way. And but you as an intercessor, you need to get that restraining order so the devil can't come to your house. You can't touch this. I was telling people just the other night, I go to the house, I lay hands on my kids while they're sleeping sometime, you know, hold on my hand and slap it on them in the name of Jesus and tell them who they're going to be. They're not going to be out there. They're teens, 13 and 16 years old, right? But they will not be like those out there. Okay, if I don't go in a room, I stand by the door. I'm giving you things what you can do. Okay, I stand there at the door at night. They don't even know it many times. And I'm praying, right? Because the scripture says, get up during the night watches and cry out for your children. Intercede for your children, your grandchildren, your family members, okay? And those that are in your life, okay? So he says to do this. All right, my last scripture here is gonna be in 
this one here, almost my last, I forgot about this other, dealing with the positive things that happened. Acts chapter 16, okay, you still don't believe that at midnight things happen, you know, there's positive and negative things and that spirit is moving as well as demonic force. Uh, where sin abound, the grace of God will much more abound. In other words, if there's a lot of negative demonic activity and witches flying all around and different things happening and doing stuff, some of you don't believe all this stuff is real. You think that I've been watching Bewitch or something. No, no, no. I'm telling you what I know to be true. I'm telling you that there are people that operate in dark magic and stuff on the planet. And uh, that's why so many people's lives are screwed up and they don't even know what's going on with them. It's because of some stuff that is going on in and around them. Okay, right. But just as that is happening, there are people that are operating on the light side. Okay. There are those of us that are releasing chants, releasing God spells, good spells, that are doing holy invocations, holy incantations. Some of you that know me, you know I do incantations. I proved it before. I've done it, you know, right on uh, our Zoom platform. It's on my website where we created incantations and literally brought fire down from heaven before you know and told when it was going to happen okay so i'm just showing you the power that we have as intercessor as watchmen on the wall now the scripture speaks about in acts chapter 16 that paul and Silas was traveling through this area and they came upon this woman and this woman had a spirit of python some of the bible says a spirit of divination that's really not a good translation it was a spirit of python OK, and that's a, that's a, nothing wrong with snakes themselves because there's the positive and the negative side of it. Jesus, Yeshua says, be wise as a serpent harmless as a dove. You see behind me, there's a dragon there. For some people, they be, oh, he's got a dragon, dragon. I had crazy people like text me or send, you know, messages on YouTube, on YouTube saying about that. Or they see my sarcophagus, oh, you know, anything that is different from European art, it must be the devil. You know, stupid people, stupid people, right? And so, uh, so anyway, uh, so there is the negative side and there is the positive side of all these things. Yeshua said, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Okay. And so, but there is the negative side. So this woman had a spirit of python that uh, gave her the ability to soothsay. Okay. She actually did see. Matter of fact, when Paul and Tim, uh, Paul and Silas saw her, they did not immediately challenge her in any way. Matter of fact, the scripture says in Acts 16 that she followed them for many days she was like their promotional manager and everything you know so follow these men they have the great power of god they're really men of god and everybody was coming because of her she was being used to bring people to the ministry see what happens with some people that are immature watchmen immature prophets immature spiritual people immature christians and stuff they see something that may be wrong and right away they want to pounce on it and they think that they need to do something paul and silas she traveled with them for days for days and she was being used to draw people <laughs> to christ and finally read the stories in Acts 16 he got tired of it and he turned and he commanded that spirit of python to come out of her and she was set free she was set free but there was a time for that can you understand that and as a mature person and stuff you have to be able to see and know when to operate know when to address an issue know when to do something and know when to just watch watch and pray watch and pray okay now and so they got thrown into jail and matter of fact, the guys, because they were going to lose a lot of money, because they were using her to make money, because she was very good at what she could do, like the spiritual arts, the prophecy, and all this other stuff, right? And so uh, they says, make sure that these guys are bound. So they didn't put them in the regular prison with the criminals that had committed a small crime, but they put them in the Greek, it says the esoteros. That's another mystery there, the third part that was the uh that was maximum security it was called the esoteros you say esoteric i won't go there so they were put there in the esoteric part of the prison in stocks and in chains and everything and it's dark it's dark they did not have light switches and you could go turn the light on it's dark you might say well they had a candle no they didn't read the story you'll see and they're in the pitch black dark the scripture says at midnight, Paul and Silas began to pray and began to sing songs. Why did they wait till the midnight hour? 
because they understood the esoteric meaning and the spiritual meaning of engaging the spirit realm between 12 and 3 o'clock. Did you hear that? They understood that. Now, had they prayed around nine o'clock, probably a miracle would not have happened. But they, they knew, okay, I can feel it now. It must be about midnight. It must be about midnight. I can feel my help. They knew that there would be more angelic help more spiritual help around that time that they would have access to. And they prayed and sang songs. And I can imagine while they were there in stocks, all bound up, beaten, black backs, bleeding sides, beating head, busted and everything. But they were praying. They were calling out to the most high God. They were singing a song. And I can imagine some of the other uh, Criminals, their prisoners were saying, shut up, shut up, shut up. But they sang even the more loud and they didn't weren't bother about those criminals because they couldn't touch them because they were all bound up too, right? And so they just kept on, sometimes people would try to shut your praise up. Don't shut up, get louder. And can you imagine, you have to put yourself there. I can imagine the acoustics in their voices reverberating throughout that whole place. You ever heard of cymatics? Cymatics is the power of sound on matter, the power of sound on matter. Can you hear what I'm saying? I'm giving you a clue here. So their voices echo and resounding throughout that prison system, reaching a certain pitch along with the heavens moving at that time, releasing influence where it shook the jail. It didn't say that the earthquake shook every other place. It didn't say that it was a city-wide earthquake. It was a jail-wide earthquake because they released a sound frequency that literally shook that place and the acoustics. And when they hit that pitch in their prayer and in their worship and singing and stuff, it shook and all of their bondages were loose. The science of it is called cymatics. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Whew. Anyway, I better stop here. The third hour, the third hour, they were set free and they got out and the jailer was about to kill himself because he thought that all of the prisons were free because all the prisons were open that is the power of intercession that can set you free and everyone else around you that is the power of intercession that can shake up your life your world your job and set things free the third watch, that's where the gates open. That's where the doors open. That's where the prisoners come out. Just as the Raphaims are released to move, you can find victory and freedom from different things that had you bound if you get in there and call out to God. Those prison doors gotta open. Now here's my last, my 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 last scripture for sure. Here. And it says this. This is Ezekiel chapter 12, verses 21. Uh, I'm going to go to verse 21. This is what the Lord is saying to you. And uh, it says, uh, and the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, the word of Yahweh came to me saying, son of Adam, son of man, what is that proverb that you have heard in the land of America, Africa, wherever you might be, Asia, Europe, <laughs> Canada, what is that proverb that you've heard? Okay. The days are prolonged and every vision fail. What? So it was like a joke. It was like a joke. Somebody need to shout. I ain't a joke. I am not a joke. I am not a joke. You are not a mean. You are not a mean. Your God is not a joke, is not a mean. And so he says, what is that proverb? What is that joke that's been going around? What is that mean going around that every vision fails? You've been prophesying. You've been telling people that God said, I'm going to have a new house. God said, I'm going to have a husband. God said, I'm going to have a wife. God says, I'm going to have a family, but my, I'm, not, I'm not pregnant yet. And it hasn't happened. And your friends are, girl, are you pregnant yet? Girl, you look like you're getting big. Are you pregnant? No, no, and you're sad and everything. And you know, what is this? What is it? Brother, what's going on? You, you got that business going yet? You got that? No, no, no. You know, and, but God said it. God said it. He says, I'm about to bring that meme to an end. I'm about to stop that meme. I'm about to stop that joke. You are not going to be the laughing stock. You are not going to be the joke of the family, of your job, and of your community or whatever. You're not the joke because your God is not the joke. He says, tell 
them this. So I'm here to tell you here. Therefore, thus said Yahweh Elohim, I will make this proverb to stop. You are not a joke. You are not a meme anymore. Hallelujah. So hold your head up high. You shall never be ashamed. You shall not be embarrassed. There's no need for embarrassment. Your God is great and he is working for you. He is on your side. Hallelujah. And they shall say no more. Use this proverb in Israel as they have said the days. Uh, but say to them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. Woo. So he says, it's only a matter of time. Watchmen, what of the night? What of the night? How much longer is there going to be dark? It's only a matter of time. Those things that you've been praying for, those things that have been prophesied to you, that's been spoken to you. He says, it's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. For there shall no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house be in the house of Israel. For I am the Lord. I am Yahweh. I will speak and the words that I speak shall come to pass. It shall no longer be prolonged. And I want to tell you this. And I want to encourage you to get up and pray. Crawl out to God. Don't stop praying. Oh, but I don't see the prayers answered. How long shall I pray? Pray until something happened. Push. Okay. Pray till you become prayer. You know, the day is at hand where you're about to see the fulfillment of the things that have been spoken to you. Just engage with the spirit. Continue to pray in faith and you will see these things happen just as Paul and Silas sing. Can you imagine? They were beaten, bruised, bloody, but they're singing and they're worshiping. And the sound of their voice shook the prison. Bless you. Bless you. May you come out of every prison, every prison that the enemy has locked you in. Every mental torment, every mental torment. I release you from every mental torment, every emotional torment, every financial prison, every physical prison, everything relationship-wise where you've been locked up in. The gates are open. The doors are open for you to come out of. Come out into your ministry and do what you've called to do. Come out into that career. Get that education that you need to become that doctor, that lawyer, that accountant, that business person. The doors are open for you. Go get that house. Go get that vehicle. It shall be prolonged. No longer. Hallelujah. Go get your wife. <laughs> Go get your husband if you want him. Well, let him find you. This is your time. God bless you.